So this is a collection update video of everything that I bought in January 2018. Um, I'm going to start with the anime DVDs that I bought. Um, I think I bought more anime DVDs than I bought just regular movies in general. So I'm going to start with those. Um, one thing I've added to my collection and I'm really happy to own is... Sailor Moon. Sorry if there's a glare. Sailor Moon um, Season 1 Part 1. I loved Sailor Moon as a kid. Probably not my first anime, but when I started taking anime seriously, I was 7 years old. I had a bunch of the pink VHS tapes. Love Sailor Moon. Um, I'm really glad that Viz, um, you know, licensed the series and everything, and I think they've finished releasing Season 3, so Season 4 should hopefully be coming out soon. Um... One thing I don't like about this particular edition is, like, the the video is really weird on just this set. Um, like, it's, like, really boxed in. It's not, like, a full screen sort of deal like the rest of the DVD sets are. Um, Viz, the company that released this, has addressed the issue, but they didn't offer any sort of, like, replacement program for it, um, which is kind of disappointing. I, I'm just buying these on DVD. I'm more of a DVD collector. I do have some Blu-ray, but I'm not a big, I'm not really big into Blu-ray right now. Um, but it's really disappointing that this video on this particular set is just really messed up. I mean, because this is like the earlier episodes. Um, there's a new English dub for Sailor Moon on these sets, and I sampled it. I'm, it's not bad. I'm more nostalgic for the Deke dub, and I really miss hearing the voices and, like, the insert songs and things like that. Um, like, I wish that was included on here, but I understand why it wasn't. Um, I'm watching it currently in Japanese. Um, I've already watched this set in its entirety. Um, I also got... Season 1, Part 2. I've already watched this in its entirety. The really annoying thing, too, is I bought these sets from Amazon. Um, this set comes with a slip cover, which is really awesome and pretty nice. And this set didn't come with one. So yeah, I, I know it, uh, there's some sort of uh, limited availability maybe with the slip covers, but I bought these via Amazon and I'll, I'll show you the rest of the sets here in a second. But yeah, I've watched, watched both of these already. I'm loving it. I love Sailor Moon. Um, watching it in Japanese is a different beast though, because there's a lot of content and things that didn't get translated over when I watched it originally um, with the Deke dub. And so it's kind of like watching another, like, a different series all in general. But um, it's very enjoyable. Um, having me pick my favorite Sailor Senshi is, like, I don't know. It's really hard. I, I want to say Sailor Mercury, but it's really hard for me to pick um, a specific... Sailor. I, I love them all. Is, is that bad? I love them all. Um, I also got Sailor Moon R Part 1. This is the second season. I'm on like the first disc of this. I think I'm on episode 50 in total. Um, I used to own this like complete arc with the aliens. The first, It's like the first 13 episodes of the season. I used to own the entirety of that on a like, VHS. I had a big VHS box set of it and I loved it loved this storyline. Um, it, it's great. It's great stuff. But once again, there's no slipcover for part one of the season, but I have Sailor Moon R part two, and I have once again the slipcover for the second part. So um, it's going to be interesting to see if I get season three part one and it doesn't come with a slipcover, and then I get the second half and it does come with a slipcover. Um, I got all these sets via Amazon, so just another, like, I don't know, slipcover limited availability thing, but, um, yep, Love and Sailor Moon, I might do a review on the first season and then the second season once I finish it at some point, just to touch basis, um, not my first first anime, but the first, like, when I first started taking anime like, seriously, like, collecting my when I was, like, seven years old, I had pretty much all of the, like, VH, earlier VHS tapes that were released, so, um, Another anime I purchased um, in January this month was My Teen Romantic Comedy Snafu 2. This is the second season. Um, I also got this via Amazon for like $17 or $18. It's a good deal. Um, 
I own the first season on DVD. I have yet to watch it, but I decided I'd go ahead and get this. Sorry for the glare. I decided I'd go ahead and get this just to complete it and see what it's all about. Um, people seem to really like this show, and it seems like something I'd enjoy too. So I'm really looking forward to watching this eventually, after I finish the first season, of course. Um, I got Whisper of the Heart on DVD. This isn't the... Disney release. This is the um, G Kids release. They recently acquired all the rights to like all the Studio Ghibli films. Um, these are supposed to be the subtitles are supposed to be more in line with the actual Japanese audio, and not just like a rehash of the the dub, like dub titles, that sort of deal. So I'm really looking forward to watching this one. I have I don't really know too much about this one. I know this is like tied in with the Cat Returns, which I also own. I own the uh, Disney release of that film on DVD. Um, looking forward to watching this eventually. Yeah, I think the cat's right there from the cat returns. Um, I have a, a huge backlog of Studio Ghibli films. I've seen probably like five or six Studio Ghibli films, love Studio Ghibli, but there's like 20 films or so I think that they have in their catalog, uh, counting Nausicaa. So I'm really looking forward to watching a lot. I'll have a Studio Ghibli marathon. I'll do, I'll do a Studio Ghibli review on like various, a bunch of their films because they own a lot of them, so... Let me know what you guys think if you want to hear a review of Whisper of the Heart or another Studio Ghibli film. If I happen to own it, I might do a review on it. And I am definitely probably going to do a review on Sailor Moon, too. So. Um, I think that's it as far as the anime releases go that I got in this month. Um, I'll go ahead and get into the, the DVDs that I bought, just regular movies and that sort of deal. Um, so this month, I... I I'm really, when it comes to buying movies, they're either things I really want to see or something I found really, really cheap that just catches my interest. I have pretty eclectic taste when it comes to, like, anime and movies and things like that, so it's not hard to entertain me, but I do have, you know, my limitations. If it's crap, then I'm probably, like, really, really crappy, then I'm probably not going to like it like most people, but I, I do like some crappy stuff, and I'm, I I did buy some crappy films this month, so hold on, let me let me get to those. Uh, the first film I bought is this movie called Dead or Alive. It's based on the fighting game. This movie is crap. It's enjoyable crap, but it's still crap. Um, my sister and I watch this. You know, it's one of those, like, you might enjoy it a lot more if you're drunk sort of deal. The dialogue is corny. The costuming, the action, it's all... It's, it's corny. It's cheese. It's a cheesy, entertaining popcorn sort of movie that you just, you know, if you hang out with your friends and you watch it, or if you like the fighting game, you might like it. Um, it's not the worst, um, like, video game to film adaptation I've seen, but it's it's pretty bad. I mean, there's some enjoyable stuff to it, like some of the dialogue is kind of funny, and some of the fights aren't that bad, but it's, I paid $5 for it. I wouldn't pay more than $5 for this. Um, yeah, it's, it's a time killer. It's popcorn entertainment, if anything. So, not bad, but, I mean, it's it's crap. It really is. It's enjoyable crap, though. Um, another movie I bought was this movie called The Death, which is, it stands for Designated Ugly Fat Friend. It's compared to Mean Girls, which I love Mean Girls. I love any, like, teenage s comedy that has a throwback to sort of like a john hughes 80s film this kind of reminded me of that um you know this movie is more the message in it is like just be yourself and don't let don't care what other people think about you that's at least what i got out of it and it's actually really funny and really enjoyable um i paid four dollars for this i bought this at target i want to say and i just got it because it was cheap and it had like a spiel about the death the Mean Girls of This Generation is a quote on the back from PerezHilson.com. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this is an enjoyable teen teen movie. If you're into teenage movies or something like that, or, you know, teen comedies, teen romantic comedies, um, I recommend it because the message in of itself is, like, just be yourself. There, It has some under... Like, it kind of reminds me of Mean Girls and, like, Heather's a little bit, but there's no, like, teenage suicide or, you know, murder attempts in it. It just has kind of that snarky, um, comedy-esque sort of meanness to it, but it's kind of, it's lighthearted. It has a, it has a deeper message, but it is very lighthearted and very funny. So 
I recommend the death if you're into, yeah, like I said, teenage comedies. And it was only $4, so can't beat that. What else did I buy? Um, I bought this movie here, um, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. Um, I paid, like, I think 5 or $6 for this. I bought this on Amazon. I bought uh, Dead or Alive on Amazon as well. Um, it's a Tim Burton film. It's based on a series of, like, three novels, I want to say. Um, this just covers the first novel. Um, I saw this in theaters originally, so when I watched this on DVD, it was my, like, second time viewing it, and I watched it with my, um, uh, my sister who hadn't seen it before, and it's a really enjoyable movie. It, it does lag in a few places. It is a little slow here and there, but if you, like, like it kind of reminded me of, like, a 1940s, um, like, X-Men meets a Tim Burton-style movie. Like, the kids have various powers. There's some time travel aspects involved. If you like um, fantasy or science fiction or, you know, you're not opposed to watching a movie with maybe, like, a little bit more of a family-friendly sort of vibe to it. This is rated PG-13, though. Uh, for intense sequences of fantasy action, violence, and peril. So, if you want your kids to watch this, watch it. Like, have them watch it with an adult. I mean... It's PG-13. It's really enjoyable. Great movie right here. I, I think I rated this like an 8 out of 10 on IMDb just for the um, slowness of some of the earlier parts of the movie. And just, just it was just, it's just a little slow pacing wise, but it's really enjoyable. So I recommend Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children if you like fantasy. I've, I've never read the novels. I don't read much novels anymore in general, um, but I, I, I wouldn't be opposed to, you know, checking them out. This is this is a good movie. And then, as far as movies go, I also got um, The Hunger Games, Mockingjay Part 1 and Part 2. Um, I love the first two films. I saw the first Hunger Games movie um, in theaters. Love that. I saw the second one, which I also own on DVD as well. Um, that one is probably the more enjoyable of the, the first two. The second one, there's just more action and like more world building and things like that. I have watched Mockingjay Part 1, and let me just tell you, I was bored during Mockingjay Part 1. Like, to me, nothing really happens in the film until, like, the last 15 minutes or so. I'm not going to spoil it, but, like, I just was a little bit bored with the third one. Like, it was enjoyable, but it wasn't as enjoyable as the second one or even the first one. And then I started watching the fourth one, Part 2, uh, Mockingjay Part 2, but I'm only about 10 minutes into it. So, um, I will keep you updated on that one. Um, I'm hoping it's a lot better than part one was, because nothing happened in, in this movie, really didn't. It's really, it's still enjoyable, you know, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of Jennifer Lawrence, but she is pretty good in these films. So, The Mockingjay Part 1 and Part 2, I paid $5 for this one, which I wouldn't pay more than $5 for it, because it was really boring. And then this one I paid $10 for, and I bought these both on Amazon, and they came with slipcover, so that's awesome. Um, I think that's it as far as the movies go, but I did buy um, one television series that I'm collecting, and that is the show called Revenge. This is Revenge Season 4. Um, I really need to get back into watching the show. I've watched Season 1 and Season 2, and I own Season 3. I have yet to watch that. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to start over from the beginning, I think, because it's been such a long time since I've actually um, watched it. Um, it's a really enjoyable, like, drama, sort of, like, thriller. This girl infiltrating, like, this high-end, uh, like, Hampton society to try and get revenge on the people that, like, screwed her and her father, her family over. Um, it's really enjoyable. Um, I have even recommended the show to people that I work with, and they've already completed the entirety of the series, so they're way ahead of me on that. Um, if you like like, a good drama, a good thriller, a good kind of, like, keep you on the edge of your seat and some stuff, um, I recommend Revenge. It's really, it's really enjoyable. Um, once again, I ordered this on Amazon. There's no slipcover. I have the slipcovers for season one and season two, and I think even season three, but this one, nope, didn't come with one, but I only paid, like, $16 for it, and it's, oh, I'm done collecting this show now, so, um, I might do a full-on, like, season by season review of this show or just like a full like series review altogether. So um keep keep you posted on that. I'll have to finish watching Revenge and let you guys know how it ends. And then um I did purchase one video game. I well the video game systems that I own I have a PS2, a PS3, um I have a DS and I recently got a DS 
2XL Lite or something like that. It doesn't have a 3D capability, but I got it as a gift for my birthday, so I can play 3DS games on it, which is awesome. Um, I did get this game. It's called Radiant Historia. Um, it's by one of my favorite video game publishers. It's by this um, company called Atlas. Let me see if you guys can... Sorry for the glare if there's a glare on this. It's my lighting. Um... This game looks awesome. It says, Restore the true history. In the midst of an unending war, Stock leads a mission that goes horribly awry. However, with the mystical White Chronicle, he discovers a way to go to the intersection of time itself, Historia, to rewrite past events. Can he thus alter the world's ill-fated course? So it's basically time travel fantasy. Um, this game looks awesome. I've been wanting to play this for a while. Um, I paid $25 for this game. Um, I got it via Amazon. I had an Amazon gift card I got for Christmas. So, yeah, this game, yeah, time travel. Use the White Chronicle to jump back and forth to key points in the timeline and write events that prevent true history from developing. And then the battling system, it looks like you can swap and move enemies around using some sort of, like, time altercation, like, alteration and move it around and move them around to attack them and things like that. So the Radiant Historia for the 3DS, this is the only video game that I bought this month. Probably the only video game that I bought in, like, a really long time. So I'm really looking forward to playing this. It's still in the plastic. It was a good price, and I'll have to maybe do, a, like, a game review. I don't play video games much, but I'll have to do a review on this and tell you guys um, how, how it works out and how it looks. So, um, what else did I get? Oh, I got, a, I got three Funkos this month um, based around one of my favorite DC Comics characters. Um... I'm more familiar with them via the Justice League animated series uh, by Bruce Timm and Paul Dini. That whole universe that takes place, you know, after, you know, Batman the Animated Series, Superman the Animated Series. Um, it came out after um, Batman Beyond did, but it takes place before Batman Beyond. Um, one of my favorite characters in that series is actually Hawkgirl. Um, I know her comic book history has kind of a convol it's kind of convoluted a little bit and kind of like a lot of different versions of her, but favorite character from that series was Hawkgirl, is Hawkgirl. So this month I got DC Bombshells Hawkgirl Funko Pop. Um, I have taken this out of the box. I have all my Funkos out of their boxes and on display in my room in various places. So really excited for this. It's really cute. I'm going to take it out of the box and show you guys what, it, what she looks like. This is what she looks like out of the box. She's got a little little cute jet pack right there. And um, she comes with a stand too. So I can't wait to display this cute little figure. So Hot Girl DC Bombshell Funko Pop. And then I also got this Legends of Tomorrow Hot Girl Pop. This was... Um, a New York Comic Con limited edition pop. I got this for $18 off of eBay. So these can vary in price. Like can be high, a, a bit higher. So um, I'm glad I got this at a pretty good price. I have the Hawkman version of this character too from Legends of Tomorrow. So I'm going to have these side by side together. That's what she looks like. The wings in the back. Little hair. <laughs> And then the final Funko I bought of Hot Girl, the only the final Funko I bought this month, is um, it's a Legion of Collectors exclusive, like the you know like loot boxes and things you can get from Funko. Um, it's just the traditional looking Hot Girl um, pop. She like this is like her comic counterpart, and this is the version that most resembles the um, Justice League cartoon version. Um, I can't wait to display this with my Justice League DVDs. So she looks like outside of the box, the wings and the mace and everything. It's she's these are really nice figures too. I, um, I paid eighteen dollars for this one too. This one can be a little bit more expensive too. I got I also got this um, off of eBay, but from a different seller. So there's yep, there's Hot Girl. This is her comic book counterpart. So yeah. And that is all I bought um, as far as Funkos go. I'm going to do what I purchased um, comic book-wise, because I did. I purchased quite a number of comic books. 
I'm going to do that in a separate video because this video has um, gone on a little bit long, um, just to break things up a little bit. So I will be back um, in a little bit just to show what comic books and graphic novels I picked up um, in January 2018. Alright, bye! See you guys soon. Bye!